Oh well, isn't this just another lovely story made and produced by our favorite Mexican drug cartels? Our protagonist here, bless his drunken soul, was simply minding his own business when the Mexican army decided to rain holy hell on his hideout. Of course, it's not like he was just any old drunk. No, no, he was Santiago Meza Lopez, a titan of the narcotics world who was so mysterious and important to the cartel that even cartel hitmen couldn't resist trying to break him out of jail. And why, you might ask? Well, it's because he was the legendary stew maker, a man who had perfected the art of making bodies disappear without a trace. Oh, what a charming nickname. I'm sure he was just the life of the party. Honestly, it's a wonder that such a brilliant strategist managed to get caught in the first place. Kudos to the Mexican army for finally taking down such an impressive foe. To understand how Santiago Meza Lopez became El Pozolero, aka the stew maker or the soup man, let's take a journey back to the late 80s, when the infamous Guadalajara cartel fell down. Its notorious leader, Miguel Felix Gallardo, got arrested and his cartel split into three factions. One of these factions was the Ariano Felix cartel, controlled by the equally infamous brothers, Benjamin Ariano Felix and Ramon Ariano Felix. This duo had control over the important trading routes from Tijuana into Baja California, which the Sinaloa cartel also had their eyes on. You know what happens when two cartels want the same thing, right? Violence. Lots of violence, kidnappings, assassinations, and everything in between. Innocent people were dying left and right, and the cartels were just dumping their bodies in rivers, literally clogging up the sewer systems and hanging them from bridges. What a lovely sight. But then, all of a sudden, the bodies just stopped showing up. Yay! Right? Nope. People were still going missing, with an average of 30,000 per year, falling victim to cartel-related violence. And the authorities had just one question on their minds. Where the heck were all the bodies disappearing to? And that's where El Pozolero comes in. He had a magical talent for making bodies disappear without a trace. What a lovely time to be alive. You see, just like a typical narco rags to riches story, Santiago Meza Lopez was born into poverty in Sinaloa, Mexico. In typical fashion for older, financially challenged generations, Santiago's parents were quite productive in expanding their family, resulting in Santiago being the ninth child out of a total of ten siblings. Well, Santiago certainly knew how to hustle from a young age, and he soon established himself as a top-notch mason. He first started doing Doing some masonry gigs for the Ariano brothers, but why stop there when you can also become a horse tender for the drug cartel, right? It's all about expanding your skill set. He was loyal and had an irresistible set of character traits. With his foot soldier mentality and incredible work ethic, he was the perfect candidate for the role of drug dealer. And let's not forget his promotion to drug office keeper soon after. Talk about climbing the corporate ladder. During those tough times, both rival cartels left behind thousands of bodies in the span of a few months when fighting for territory, and that attracted the attention of the US law enforcement agencies like the FBI and DEA. Just like for birds, it's the scarecrow that scares the heck out of them. For kids, it's the boogeyman. For the rest of the world, it's Chuck Norris, but for Narcos, it's the DEA. In order to avoid getting caught, they needed a foolproof method to dispose of the bodies without leaving any trace that could be linked back to them. As long as they're in Mexico, they can mess around, even when in prison. But when they smell extradition in the air, that's when they start to behave. A little, at least. And so they quickly started to look for a solution. As the Bible says, you seek, you shall find or something like that, so they received advice from some foreign criminals. The advice was both simple and twisted, so much so that even Hollywood producers would struggle to come up with such a diabolical method. Instead of scattering the bodies all over the place, turn them into a pulpy mess and grind the bones to dust. Bingo. This was the perfect and cost-effective solution the Ariano brothers were looking for. And guess who was the perfect fit for the job? You know who. Who wouldn't want a long-term gig disposing of heaps of bodies? It's the stuff 
dreams are made of. So Santiago started first dissolving chunks of meat in a 50-gallon barrel and slowly graduated to his first dissolution of a real dead body. Santiago's job was both gruesome and lucrative. He was tasked with dissolving human bodies in a 50-gallon barrel of corrosive solution, reducing them to a gooey sludge with only bone fragments remaining. This sickeningly effective method of body disposal earned Santiago a promotion to head of the disposal division and a comfortable salary of $600 a week. When business was booming, Santiago received upwards of 30 bodies per month, all delivered to predetermined in locations where he would pick them up. In short, he was paid handsomely for making human beings disappear without a trace. This is where his nickname, El Pozolero, comes from. Pozole is a traditional Mexican stew, soup-like dish, made of pieces of meat and maize grains mixed with a lot of garnish like chopped up lettuce, onions, and radish. So, as you can imagine, the barrels were bits and pieces of liquefied body parts resembling a huge pot of pozole. I love how Mexicans can be creative when naming stuff. Anyway, if you think this story is cool so far, check out this sick turn of events. Santiago started to work closely with Tio Doro Garcia Cimental, aka El Tio, whose expertise lied in extortion and kidnapping for the Arellano Brothers organization. As you can imagine, the majority of his kidnapped victims ended up in Santiago's barrels. Twelve years and countless liquefied bodies later, El Tio had a big fallout with the Arellano cartel and decided to switch teams and started to work for the Sinaloa cartel and El Chapo himself. Of course, he took Santiago with him and so El Pozolero was now the head stew maker for the Sinaloa cartel, which meant that he would be dissolving and cooking his former comrades and co-workers. Talk about loyalty. Loyalty to the Benjamin, maybe. The events took a turn after El Tio's kidnappers were arrested in 2005 and shed light on their cleanup protocol, along with a detailed description of the stewmaker which helped the authorities discover Santiago's identity, and just like that, he became the target priority number one. His career accomplishments even got him on the FBI most wanted list. Since then, El Pozolero was able to fly under the FBI's radar for more than four years until his love for booze betrayed him. One night, he and his crew were throwing a big party with loud music, sex workers, and all you would expect from a classy narco fiesta when a neighbor tipped them off. But before the Mexican law enforcement was able to get to the scene, the narcos received a tip and El Tio and his squad were able to flee last minute. But not our Pozzolero. He was so much in the vibe, cooking seafood and sipping his tequila, that he didn't even notice his fellas leaving the scene. And so, on the 25th of January 2009, he was captured by the Mexican army. One of the soldiers, when taking him away, recalls that Santiago whispered to him, You have no idea who you're messing with. Except he did a very clear idea who they'd just captured. After his arrest, Santiago confessed to dissolving over 300 bodies. As they paraded him in public, he played the drama. McQueen, weeping and lamenting while proclaiming his innocence. He pleaded with God for forgiveness, insisting that he was not a monster or a killer, but simply a good person who had resorted to his crimes to provide for himself and his family. Suffice to say that no one was buying it. El Pozolero refused to provide the victim's remains location, and it's believed that the 300 liquefied bodies he confessed to was actually the minimum, and the real number might be much bigger. In August 2017, three new grave sites were discovered with at least 7,000 human fragments and 2,000 teeth. And this was what confirmed the suspicion of the authorities that Santiago's body count was not only 300. It must have been in the tens of thousands. Later on, at least 14 to 15,000 fragments of remains were subsequently found in another area. In 2012, Santiago Meza Lopez was sentenced to, and get this, just 10 years in prison on cartel related charges. Despite confessing to his heinous crimes and never denying countless dissolved bodies, why only 10 years? Who knows? Thoughts 